y'all, what's the tea? It's me, Aja, and we're here spilling this scalding hot tea that's giving us third degree burns at Billboard Pride. And I'm... <laughs> we're shaking. Um, but we're here to talk about music now, which uh, okay. the girls, everyone here has music, which we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but what I want to know is, which queens do you guys think girls? Do you guys. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Uh, which queens do you girls think are making the best music right now? Um, for me, honestly, my number one um, drag drag race uh, music creator for me personally is Adore Delano. I think that she has a great voice. I think that she is a singer. Yes. I don't even really see him or her as like a drag queen. I see him as a person that utilizes his drag platform in a way to present his music, which mm -hmm. is very authentic and original and really talent, like he's super talented. And that voice is amazing. And for me, the music is just so beautiful. And for me, at the end of the day, if we're talking about being like vocally talented, I feel like Adore for me is the one. I also really enjoy some of Willem's music too. I think it's really funny. Um, and of course, Alaska is just so inclusive with the community and with the girls and has a really like well thought and just like she's, she's a, a fucking, ear. yeah, she's like a genius when it comes to making music, I feel. And so she it, like really like kills the vocal fire. Like she does it on the song and it sounds like cute. Yeah. 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 For me, I just love, um, I didn't shake my hands. Um, <laughs> for me, I just love Alaska's music so much. And th this is why a lot of people say stuff like, these girls, like, this girl doesn't make drag music, or this girl doesn't make right. music that sound like yeah. drag. But you know what? Alaska is making drag music. And when you say stuff like, well, so and so doesn't make drag music, what you're doing is devaluing drag music. You're devaluing a whole subculture and saying this music is less valid than that music. And doesn't that sound very familiar with hip hop and jazz and, and mm. all that stuff, saying that those, that these, types of music aren't valid, but her music is about drag. It is for drag. It's for drag fans, it's for drag yeah, people. Absolutely. And I think it's good music. Like I wanna, mm -hmm. even if she's not singing, for, for me you don't have to be the best singer. For well me, that's really drag love. music I feel. Yeah. It's not yeah. about singing, bitch. It's about vocally expressing yourself so, and making that money. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> and it's, about being, it's about being, when I hear music I'm like, I can relate to that. Like I'm like, that's that makes sense to me because I know that story. They say that about her music? No, I say that about her music. When I, when I hear stuff, when I hear songs like Race Chaser, or when I hear uh, songs <laughs> like uh, uh, Legendary, or when I hear songs, like when I hear her song, I'm like, I'm like, that makes sense to me because for me as a drag queen, I can relate. Yeah. For me, what I try to do, like when I think about like Queen She Make Music, I try to like take the aspect of it being drag music all the way out, so that way I can like appreciate it for the genre it is. Like, this is a club track. I don't want to think of this as this is like a yes. drag queen making music, because then I feel like I'm dividing it from yeah. like, yeah. you know, that's mm -hmm. where the whole argument of normal music, drag music comes up, and then I feel like calling it drag music actually devalues it, in my opinion. Because I feel like, you know, then it becomes like, it becomes a, a niche and a trope, and it's like, it's just, it's dance music, or this is R&B, or this is hip hop, like. Yeah. But for me, the, 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 the thing about devaluing it by calling it drag music is saying there's something deep not of value in drag. Right. Correct. You see what I'm saying? I understand so, that. Yeah. It's like saying, I don't make hip hop, I make music. Bitch, you make hip hop, call it hip hop. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. like, oh, everyone else making music, but hip hop, they're making hip hop, we're making music. Oh, they're making music, we're making drag music. Drag music is music, and it's okay for me to call it drag music, because yeah. for me, that has value. Sure. Like, I, the girls will tell you, I'm, I know all of y'all's songs. Every song that, not every single one of y'all's songs, but I can, I can sing. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. let But I can it. sing lyrics from each one of your songs because uh -huh. I fucking love drag music. Yeah. I can do the- That's cool. Yeah, I can I do the fucking that. verse from um, Stun. Uh -huh. I can do uh, the thing from Black Pepper. I can do, um, I'm not gonna forget the name of the song. I can do things from, um, what's your song? Level your pussy up. Ha! If you're feeling <laughs> fun. Ha! I mean, I, I fucking listen to Thought Process at the gym like it's my religion. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't give a fuck. Hey, I know all the, I like, cause I just fucking love it. It, it has, it has real, it's catchy. it yeah. has real value to me. Well, I think uh, before the, for, well, the girls that I love, I mean, I love all the girls that you've mentioned. Um, I actually really do like Fifi O'Hara's music. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, You're the one. Another talented really, vocal really, really artist. Talented. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> Singer. I'm joking for the record. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that I think <laughs> It's interesting is there was a moment in time where I think 
queens were <laughs> just recording music because they needed something to perform when they went and tour. Yeah. yeah. But now I think folks are starting to see it as a viable with people like Adore, with people like Trixie, seeing mm -hmm. this music as something that, you know, I mean, the music industry is. Huge. We love Billboard. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you did. You know what you did. The music industry is fucked. It's got some of the biggest issues with race and gender and mm -hmm. discrimination that as, that any other major uh, industry has. Uh, but one of the things that's so great is that these drag queens who are musicians, like we always do, are bringing kind of our Renaissance woman approach that you know we always have talent in fashion and performance and we pull from all yeah. the different arts that we that have helped that we've experienced in our mm -hmm. lives and we put that into our art form yeah. and so these musicians these queens are bringing their queerness and they're bringing their blackness and the they're bringing culture. their country yeah. and their culture all And it's into, just too much mama yes. they can't handle the truth <laughs> Exactly <laughs> and they're bringing this to uh, into and we're we're kind of creating a new genre that folks are going to be able to start making money off of yeah, and true. hopefully not raping us the mm -hmm. way that they raped other people in the music industry. But I mean, this is a really good way for folks to be able to, and I don't mean literally. I mean, you know, figuratively. Yeah, we got um, it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're able to yeah, we tour, got it. <laughs> and hopefully we can oh tour on our music. <laughs> yes. Tour, you know, and 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 <laughs> you know, go real. to the Grammys and and I, I want to start. I think drag is starting to change from that niche thing that was just in the gay bars mm -hmm. to something that now is mainstream. mainstream. Yeah. And now we're on Broadway and now we're on national television. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon we're gonna be on the radio and on, you know, on the Grammy. I personally love Shay's music. Yeah. Shay Coulee, I another love one. Love Shay's love Shay. Jay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. And Kaki, I swear to God, I tell her every day. Like Sickening. Kaki is my favorite song out of all the girls. No, yeah. It, and I'm like, also, and I'm not just saying it because she's here, Aja makes great music. Yeah, yeah. I, was I say, wanted to say, yeah. Ms. Brujeria, she gives culture so and rhythm. and with you and your artistry and your writing talent. Oh, thank you so much. Your spit you know, game and is... It's, you know, it's just so great to see you. I mean, when we did CLAT, that was a long time ago, but well, we were all kind of novices <laughs> in, <laughs> in... Get out of here. <laughs> and so to see you really take that and run and turn it into something that's so great. I can just see you're blazing a trail, and yeah. there's so much more that I know you're gonna do, which is so great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I Actually, I wanted to do uh, hip hop and rap for a long time. I've, I've been a writer all my life. And uh, then I started doing drag, because that was what was making me the money. And mm -hmm. then uh, after Drag Race, I was like, okay, now I have to like do what I really wanna do, which is music. Uh, you can check out my EP and my feelings on Spotify, iTunes. Uh, I'm actually working on a huge album project right now set to release in February working on like a world tour like I'm really trying to make this like a huge thing um, but uh, one artist who I really uh, love their music they were never on Drag Race but uh, from Brazil we have Pablo Vitar yes. who I, I think is legendary because without a big platform like Drag Race. She did it. She skyrocketed yeah. and became super famous in Brazil in like a year or two. Mm -hmm. And her voice is amazing. She's done like these huge shows, has like filmed music videos in Morocco with Diplo. She's major. She's the most followed oh, drag God. queen in the world on yeah. Instagram besides Tyler Perry. Yeah. <laughs> Who is a drag queen. <laughs> Tyler Perry is a drag queen. You wearing a dress? God. You a drag queen. But uh, that alone <laughs> says something about Unless like- you're a trans woman. <laughs> Tyler Perry is a drag queen in the story. Uh, I think Pablo doing all that is alone is like a huge statement on how big drag is going to influence culture, mm -hmm. not just in America, but around the world yeah. and oh, the music mm -hmm. industry. Yes. And she's signed to Sony, which is a huge record label. So I can't wait to see where uh, music and drag goes in the future. Yeah. I think people are starting to, record labels and the industry is starting to realize that because of technology and the access that people have to making their own music and distributing their own music, they have to recognize drag artists and queer artists and all other types of artists as a viable way yeah. to uh, somebody who's who's who needs to have their voice heard and deserves to have their voice heard because we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you have millions of followers and you're making an album, you 
you know, Sony better get with you because mm -hmm. it's going to happen either way. And I'm also so sick of people, like, people being like, why does every drag race girl have to have a single? Because mind your business, that's why. <laughs> Because mind your fucking business. Because we want to make money, that's why. It's not even that. I think it's releasing our own creative juices where we put oh, it oh, with... My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? I mean, it's... For me, for so long, I've always wanted to have my Missy Elliott moment. And I was like, I'm not going to get it just, like, performing her music. I want to do it mm -hmm. my way and yeah. that I want to do. That's what's popping. You know, and, like, I want to talk about things that I want to talk about. Like, the how women are just supposed to just... Even in hookup culture, when a guy gets all these girls or a top gets all these little bottoms, it's okay. <laughs> but when the girl decides to play the hookup game, she's a slut. Correct. You know what I mean? So I was like, no, 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 no. And that's why I wanted to make my, like, music. Thought process available on yeah. iTunes today. <laughs> I want boys to know, you know, there's a difference between a boyfriend and you're a fuckboy. Okay. Black Pepper, available on iTunes, iTunes. today. <laughs> plug, plug. <laughs> um, yet another dig, available on iTunes today. Hashtag Latina Mas Latina, available on iTunes and YouTube. And subscribe to my channel, Gia Gun Entertainment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna move on to comedy. Oh, I don't know if about that now. I was waiting for somebody to do something funny. I was looking at Bob. I was like, dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> okay, y'all getting carried away now. Uh, the question I have is, some of our sisters have been called out for going too far with their jokes as drag infiltrates the mainstream. Do queens have the responsibility to be politically correct? Yes. I'll say it right now. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, you're not going to see eye to eye on no, this. We're, we're. <laughs> okay, bitch, let's fight. Uh, <laughs> look, I think part of the, one of the things about equality and being recognized, and we just were talking about music and wanting to be respected as, a, as somebody who should be able to enter the room, mm -hmm. go into the Grammys, go to the Tonys, go to the Oscars, be on this mainstream yeah. stage and platform is we have to play by the same rules as everybody else in terms of respecting each other. And if we want them to open up their spaces for us, then we have to open up our spaces for them, which means we gotta tidy up a little bit. And if somebody's gonna, and yes, it's drag, and yes, it's comedy and yeah. drag comedy, whatever, you know, it should be treated the same as any other comic. But, you know, I think in terms of drag comedy, I guess if, if that's kind of the, the angle of this, then we have to be, we have to just be cognizant that with technology and with the way that things are being spread and the way that people communicate, you know, you will be held accountable for what you say. Yeah. And yeah. you just have to know that. So you say it, but don't get all p your panties when in a bunch. Calls you when somebody calls yeah. you out. Yeah. 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 I would say, honestly, what you're saying is right. And I, I will say this. You know, when you... Laughing is, is not... It's involuntary. It's like sneezing. Mm -hmm. You can't help what you laugh at. <laughs> You just can't, and, and, and if you, hear, I do laugh at jokes that might be inappropriate, and it's, it's, it's not because I'm just, I, sometimes I just can't help it, like, wow, that made me laugh, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> right, now it's I, natural. Now I have to live with the fact that I laughed at that. <laughs> and, you know, I, as a comedian, and as a person, by the way, I'm not here for anyone out there who tells me, who says that they do not have non-PC moments, because we all do. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? We all have non-PC moments, because as whatever privilege you have, you have a non-PC moment on the opposite side of that. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why, we, you know, in, in for different strokes for different folks, I, I believe that... that <laughs> it, it rhymed. I was shaking. Uh, so my, my new album, Different Strokes for Different Folks, drops soon. Um, <laughs> but I think that sometimes when you... When I hear certain things that it might be wrong and I end up laughing at it, First of all, do you know why you're laughing at it? Do you know what you're laughing at? My mm -hmm. comedy isn't like that Bianca Del Rio, get you, get you, get you style of comedy. Mine is more about um, observation, about uh, political satire and where we are. So it's not mm -hmm. quite like, you know, you Asian this and you Latino that. Um, but my humor is about what I'm seeing around me in mm -hmm. those moments. Mm -hmm. And there are venues where um, I think that the, um, the mood it is um, a bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, problematic. 
and that is when people, are, that's when people all in the room are like, we all are agreeing we're gonna be problematic, but the issue is that people outside of the room aren't agreeing yeah. to oh, engage yeah. uh -huh. in the problem. So when and you had a, people on YouTube watching yeah, it in 10 minutes. Yeah. So when you had a roast, everyone on stage, like we've all agreed to be problematic. People in artists, like we've all agreed to watch something problematic, but then you have to realize there are people outside on of YouTube the world that, that are exist. waiting. So I've told jokes, on, on those stages I've told jokes, size jokes, um, race jokes, uh, things along those nature, and I've gotten backlash, and I just accept it. I say, all right, work. And I, then when people come to me, I, I, depending on what I said, if I if I genuinely thought it was too far, then I'd be like, you know what? Thinking back, I can see, see that was wrong. But if I stand by it, then I'm needing leaks. I said what I said, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I recently posted a tweet, and I was just trying to be funny and stupid about, like, this uh, the thing that I went through, I experienced with a guy, because the guy was like, this black guy told me that I was racist because I didn't want to date him because he's black. And I was like, actually, no, because you look like a burnt crunch bar and oh. Shrek had a baby. Oh. Fierce. That's okay. So I said, but then I thought it was just funny and some people got it and it was just that. But then there were some people. Oh, who, I got it. Because <laughs> he was just ugly. Oh, I got it. I just didn't want it. I think, the, I think, honestly, the most offensive thing you can do in comedy, the, the most offensive thing you can do in comedy is not be funny. Yeah. And the moment no one's laughing, yeah. everyone's mad. Yeah. If it is funny it's enough. It's a thin line, too. It's, it's a oh, real it was, fine line. I get that. And I did. I did yeah. It was like, it was one of those moments, like, da da da, tweet. And I was like, uh oh. It wasn't until after that I was like, oh, people pointed it out. They that misinterpreted it. And they misinterpreted it. But it was just like, was the guy was just bar. ugly. But you and know, I was the just like, and then the guy, some friend. people were like, oh, it's, you're being. <laughs> you're being racist to people who are dark. And I was like, actually, no. I wish I could have just <laughs> tweeted his picture because he was just... That would have been going maybe a little too far. Though. But I was <laughs> just like, so y'all could realize why I said what I said. But then for him, to say, context. <laughs> for, him to, for him to say that I'm racist because I wouldn't date a black guy, I'm like, no, that's not true, boo. I just think that's actually on top Anyone of my Anyone who list. knows Jiggly knows that she's... Hello, honey. Thank you. I think, well, I think one of the things that I have a problem with is that comics who kind of don't like the fact that anyone could possibly have a problem with anything they have to say. That's stupid. You can't just be like, it's comedy, you have no right to be upset about anything, is, you know, doesn't make any sense to me. I think that's part of the issue. I but agree. Why is some comedy, like, I always use Bianca Del Rio as, like, the that number one, like, post. yeah, like, <laughs> comedian, like, just superstar. And it's like, why can some of her jokes be accepted and people actually laugh at, but then if somebody else were to say some of those I mean, things, Bob said it. maybe in a, a different of, tone, it's a like, it's offensive. I think there's a lot of factors involved in that. Tell us. One is, if it's funny, people will, if it's not funny, they'll automatically be mad. Also, two is, she doesn't always get away with it. You guys know that Bianca Del Rio just made a rape joke uh -huh. yes. at uh, Montreal Pride, oh, and it went over like a lead balloon, like a fart in the fucking elevator. It did not go over it was over not well. the first time she's made that joke. She's been saying it on the tour the entire time. Yeah, and the, But at Montreal Pride, it was a different... Yeah, Montreal was like... Yeah. The straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, Celine, Celine Dion was not into it. They were, they were mad over there. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> she... <laughs> She accepted that that's what she got. She didn't just go, you're all stupid. You don't get to be offended. Actually, I don't know. I don't even know what her response was. I actually don't. She may have, she may, they may have, those she may have probably been, did. Those may have been her exact I think words. She did. Yeah. But when I say something and people are offended, I just go, you know what? Okay. I can see why you're okay. offended. Right. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. You don't get to tell, yeah, I just had to, you don't like get to tell people why they can't be offended. That's Rude. not how that works. All right, so Bob, I have a question for you. What's poppin'? Uh, when you were working on your comedy special, did you have to consider this politically correctedness? Uh, was your material different than it would have been pre-Drag Race? Suspiciously large woman available on iTunes and Amazon Prime. Um, I mean, okay, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I there. First of all, we, I, I do believe that everyone is essentially problematic on some area mm -hmm. or another. No mm -hmm. one is a is Perfect. a no one is a non-binary vegan blah blah blah. You know, no one is like the <laughs> Epicenter of no one is non-binary. <laughs> no, that's not Bob the drag queen attacks <laughs> Aja again. I'm not a vegan. No, but no one, no one is the epicenter of things that aren't. You know, I believe. I mean, I can't even acknowledge that the people were offended by the um, the title of my special, suspiciously large, suspiciously large right. woman. And um, you know, that's just something that a lot of my friends used to always say here in the city, um, and uh, they started calling me a suspiciously large woman. And I was like, oh, that, that tickles me, and I, and I caught it. And I, I, if someone is upset by me saying that, I'm like, I know 
why you're upset that I said that. I can't be like, you're stupid. You don't get to be mad about that. Sure. I, and I just go, <laughs> I, can, I can hear that. I hear your voice. Your voice is valid. I will take that into consideration. And that's it. That, that's the tea. Yeah. That's the tea. We've spilled it. We've spilled it. Scorched, burnt, hot chocolate. It's burning. <laughs>